welcome to another Aging Equestrian Vlog. It's Christy and Logan looking for treats. So this week I wanted to talk about how to get back to riding with a little bit less pain. And one of the most important things that I am going to try to impart to you is that as Aging Equestrians... Anyway, um, what I'm trying, what I would like to try to impart to you is that as an aging equestrian, we can at least get smarter, right? We can wise up because we're not young anymore. You know, we're getting wrinkly, we're getting gray, we're getting saggy. Things kind of fall apart as far as muscles and bones and, and all that stuff. Uh, but I will say that a lot of that has to do with the fact that when you're 20 and 30 and sometimes even in your 40s, you're not paying any attention. You're not aware. You have no idea what's going on or why you're hurting because most of the time, if you're hurting, it'll go away in a day or two. So you don't really think about it. But now those aches and pains don't go away, right? Yeah. And they actually compound and all of a sudden you reach for the vacuum cleaner or a tissue and your back spasms and you can't move. So these are things that happen over time and they're not one thing that, that caused them. It's not one thing that causes them. It's a multitude of things. And at the barn, as an equestrian, you're going to be doing a lot of stuff, a lot of repetitive things. Excuse me. No, no pushing, no shoving. You're going to be doing a lot of repetitive things, a lot of stuff that is going to be causing you to bend over, to pick up, to put things above your head, to hold on to stuff. So your arms are going to get used. Your back is going to get used. Um, and if you don't have the proper muscle chain patterns, you're going to use muscles incorrectly or even abuse them because you don't have the necessary muscle chain to do it properly. And that's kind of normal when we start to do new things because we don't actually know how to do them. Um, so don't, you know, feel like you're a terrible person for doing it incorrectly. Um, I am going to give you, I am going to give you a couple of tips for two of the major things that I find pain with, and I hope that they help you. Oh, and I think I forgot to tell you, I'm actually in my real life, in my day job, not this one here. Um, I'm a licensed massage therapist and I'm a sport yoga instructor. So I know a lot about muscles. I know a lot about pain. I know a lot about the kinesiology, the movement of muscles. And I understand a lot of how pain is caused by repetitive action and overuse of muscles. So I'm coming from that place when I talk about these things and when I give you suggestions, which you can take or throw away. It's up to you entirely. It's not medical advice. It's not me saying you have an issue and this is what you need to do. Um, take the advice as you will. And I hope that it can be helpful. this before. Maybe you have, but when we are bending over, we're not supposed to be using our back muscles. I'm sure you've heard use your legs, but like, what does that actually mean? And really it's not just your legs you should be using. You should be using your core because your core can actually lift up and help hold and stabilize your spine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I do it, picking out Logan's feet. So what you're going to do is you're going to pull your belly button in or you're going to clear your throat. So if you clear your throat, <clears throat> that automatically tenses the correct muscles. You're going to bend into your knees like you're doing a, a chair pose in yoga, which I'll show you later in the video. And then you're going to ask for the horse to lift up his hoof. I'm scooting my feet over a little bit. And then you're going to keep your back neutrally straight. So I'm not arching it. I'm not rounding it. I'm keeping it neutrally straight 
I keep clearing my throat so that I keep those proper core muscles engaged. And then you can actually engage your legs and you'll feel what that should be like because you're in a squat. As equestrians, we're really strong people. So this is really good exercise and you can stay here for long periods of time without it hurting your back. And then when you wanna come out of it, all you need to do is place your hands on your thighs, pull your belly button in a little bit more. You can even push off your thighs and use your legs to straighten up. And then you're not whipping your back up like this, which uses those back muscles, which will eventually cause them to spasm, lock up, and leave you in a lot of pain rising on the floor. Honestly, that really happens. So that's my hook to cat. <laughs> Okay, so another tip I have for saving your back is when you're down and working on legs and you have to be down here for a little while, like with mud, and that is basically all year long in upstate New York, instead of being down here like this and putting all this pressure on a knee, um, when you stand up, that's really gonna hurt and mine already do. So what you can do if this is comfortable is you actually come down into a squat and you should be able to fit your elbows in between your knees, keep your belly button pulled in a little bit. And it's really nice in riding boots because you have higher heels. So it's a little easier and you don't come off of your balance as much as you would. If you feel like you are, you can always squat with something under your heels. But this is a really great way to avoid both knee pain and back pain. And you can stay down here for a little while and get all of your work done. And then when you want to come out of it, I don't know who is making a fuss in the stall. You pull your belly button in and don't put any weight on your legs like this. You actually want to press into your heels and you can stand up using your leg muscles. of my other hacks isn't really a hack per se so much as it is just you got to work a little smarter not harder and it has to do with buckets water buckets specifically because water buckets as you can see they're wider at the top than at the bottom and you can see this one Logan likes to fill with lots of food, so I have to change his pretty consistently. So when I go to pick up buckets, if they are as full as that blue one is, and you can see it's pretty full, this is hard for me to carry. Number one, it is heavy, yes. And carrying one bucket, it makes you off balance. And I'm just gonna put the phone down and I'm going to try to demo how I walk <laughs> with a really full bucket. So the bucket will bang into my leg like this as I walk and it will spill water into my boot which is really annoying and disgusting and it gets all over the floor too and if it's cold out that water will freeze on the floor so not a good thing. Um, you can try holding it out like this, whoa, but that is absolutely terrible body mechanics. So that's a no. So what I like to do is I take one of these buckets, which you can get at like Home Depot or whatever. I think this is a tractor supply one. And I will pour some of this into there because this bucket doesn't bang your leg. Yay! So, that's one of my tips for buckets. And then I can carry, this one is less than half full now. So even if it bumps into my leg, it's not gonna spill for the most part. And this one is only halfway full, which is really manageable for me. So it's important to have bucket water levels at manageable levels for you. And that's one of my tips for carrying buckets correctly. <laughs> Doesn't have as much to do with 
how to pick it up as it as it does distributing the weight of the water a little bit better. But the real way to avoid picking up heavy buckets is to be smart and use a hose. And I thought I would give you a little bit of a breakdown on how to do the hacks that I gave you, the pick hack, um, the yoga squat, uh, to, to show you how to do them within yoga, because it's kind of where I pull them from. And I thought maybe I should break those moves down for you a little more specifically and a little more slowly. <laughs> So I am not saying you should do this. You definitely, before any exercise program, need to get approval from your doctor. You may have had surgeries, you may have injuries, those things all need to be addressed. I don't know if this is good for you or not, only you can decide that. Do it at your own risk. If it hurts, obviously, probably not a good idea to do it. So I'm gonna start with a, a bit of a breakdown of the um, hook pick hack bending over, forward fold, as we'll call it, in yoga, and how to kind of pull your belly button in, and we'll go from there, okay? So one important thing to note about yoga is that everybody does it differently. You do not have to look like the perfect yogi. You don't have to look like me. I'm not very flexible, but that's why I do yoga, because it helps. You don't have to be perfect, and you know, don't think that you need to look the way I look. Everybody's body is different. Okay, so with that in mind, all you have to do is start in a forward fold. So I want you to bend your knees and just kind of let your upper body hang down over your thighs. And from here, you should be able to touch the ground at some point. Right now, you know, you may need to have your legs really bent. Maybe your legs are more like this. That's fine. Wherever your comfort zone is, whatever feels okay is what you should be doing. Relax your head and your neck. And I just want you to practice pulling your belly button in and or clearing your throat and then lifting your upper body up a little bit by pressing into your heels and then strengthening or not strengthening, activating that core. You can actually support the lift of your back with core muscles and not just lifting it up from the top side here, the back muscles, okay? So I just want you to feel that and come into a neutral back position. We call this flat back in yoga. You'll hear them say that in your yoga classes. And I'm straightening my legs a little bit. I've got my hands on my shins. I'm just gonna let my head kind of hang loose, but you can see I'm not arching my back and I'm not rounding my back. It's in a nice neutral position. I have my belly button engaged. And then I'm gonna relax all of that and I'm just gonna fold forward again. So then I'm gonna bend into my knees and I'm going to use that belly button core again, lift my arms up a little bit and bring my upper body to this nice angle here, maybe 45 degrees, I'm thinking. So this is the position I'm in when I'm picking out hooks. I've got my back neutral, it's not arched, I've got my belly button pulled in, it's not rounded, I'm not doing this, hunching over. I'm actually really supporting my weight in my heels. I can lift my toes up. Both of my toes are pointing forward. I'm supporting a lot of my weight here. And I'm also holding, if I'm holding a horse's leg and they're starting to lean on me, I've got my core ready to hold on and to add weight up here. Okay, and when I want to come out of it, you put the horse's hook down, you can come back down into a forward fold and utilize this as a nice stretch for your hamstrings and your calves. And then bend those knees and let's do a roll actually. Let's do the opposite of what we were doing and do something with our spine. Pull the belly button in and roll all the way up. There. 
And that is how you can learn to utilize those yoga moves and the correct supportive structure of your body so you don't injure yourself as easily. It is not a guarantee. Sorry, injuries happen. Um, but the more that you do it with the supportive structure in place, with your core, with your legs, the more likely you are to do it well and to do it with less pain. So on to Malasana or Garland Pose or Yoga Squat. So this one is a little bit more simple. It's a very natural position for us, especially when we're young and flexible. <laughs> that becomes kind of unnatural because we don't do it. Um, but studies have shown, or I think studies anyway, I shouldn't say that, uh, but it is something that in the yoga world has been known to really help with hips, to alleviate back pressure. It actually puts your intestines in the proper position for elimination. Who knew? Somebody did. Um, so it's a really good position to try and uh, we probably should use it more, but um, it isn't the easiest one to get into and to get used to using because it does require some ankle flexibility which not everybody has, um, so you can work on that. And it also requires some balance and some strength in the legs and in the core. So I'm gonna show you some ways to do it with some help that make it easier. As I mentioned in the video where I was actually showing you how to do it while cleaning muddy legs, um, heels really help. Having something underneath your heels is excellent, which is why I have this rolled up yoga mat, because I can use that. You can use books. You can put heels on. I mean, I don't recommend like high heels, but you know, if you have a boot with a little bit of an inch or an inch and a half heel, like your riding boots, um, that can be something you can practice in. But the easiest way to get into it, I think, when you're first starting out is from the floor, because you're down here already. And you can push yourself, you can bring your heels in and you can push your butt off the, the mat and you can rock up onto your toes. And this is not the kind of squat that is super beneficial simply because you're putting a lot more pressure on your joints here. You're taking all the weight here. You've got the weight on your ankles. You're holding your heels up. You're engaging your calf muscles. Blah, blah, blah. Shut up, Christy. Okay. So if you're here, you could take whatever thing you've got to put your heels on and put your heels on it. And then I want you to widen your feet and point your toes out at an angle, like a 45 degree angle or a little bit less. And as you can see, I'm already balancing pretty nicely. I've taken a lot of the pressure off of my ankles. This has become pretty comfortable to sit here. Um, your legs need to be wide enough for you to fit your elbows in here and not be crouching like this. We need to be having a nice straight spine, shoulders down away from the ears, engaging the core. This is a great balancing act here. You're actually working a lot of muscles and over time, you might be find it to be a little bit strange, but over time you'll actually find it kind of relaxing. Like it's not hard to be in this position it does not hurt my knees at all versus being here or here on the floor of the barn like really really hurts my knees so this position i find i can do lots of things with the horse's legs and i don't get tired and i don't have pain that might not be the case for you so as i said do only what you can do and ignore this if it's not something you can do um but this is how i would start out just trying it. And then when you want to come out of it and you're just starting, let's just do that. Let's stretch our legs out. Come into a forward fold here over your legs. Turn, do some twists. Rotate your ankles a little bit. Warm them up if that was really difficult for them and they found it hard to do. And just kind of ease your way into it. Another way you can come into the squat is from standing. So 
if you're standing, you can hold on to something, first of all. <laughs> that might help. Bring your feet wider than your hips, point your toes out, and then you just kind of sink back like you would sit in a chair, and bend to the knees, bring your elbows in, touching the insides of your knees, and then you can actually press your elbows out and pull your knees in at the same time. And so I just wanted to end the yoga video here because in my office, I don't know if you heard it, but the heat comes on, it sounds like an airplane taking off. And I was like fighting to get everything done in between. It comes on like every five minutes. It's really annoying. Um, so as far as Malasana and the yoga squat goes, um, it's actually a really good idea to check out more YouTube yoga instructors. Um, if you just type that in the search yoga squat, uh, or Malasana, it will literally pop up with lots of different, um, yoga videos that are free and they break it down really well. Some of them will use yoga blocks that you can sit on, you know, so that it doesn't, um, it doesn't hurt you as much. Like they'll really walk you through these poses in more, in more depth than I really have time for because this video is already pretty long. So check those out. They can definitely help you. And um, as with any uh, activity and yoga thing, you know, do what feels good and don't try to look like everyone else. Recognize that your body is unique, especially with the things that you have done with it. Many of us have certain injuries, weaknesses, strengths. So just be gentle with yourself and don't try to force yourself into positions that don't work yet. Use the modifications that instructors will give you. They're very helpful. Um, but I really hope that these tips help because, I mean, going to the barn can be very tiring and make you very sore. So the more we can prevent the soreness by using proper muscles or by just working smarter, the better and the longer our time at the barn will be.